So last time we were talking about finished up kind of on this scenario of what if I'm given pressure and temperature, not not this scenario of pressure or temperature, and then one of the other four. This scenario of what if I'm given pressure and temperature, and I said, well, go look up given the pressure value. This is the way I think about it. Given the pressure value, go look up then the saturated temperature at the given pressure. That's your boiling temperature. Right? That's your boiling temperature. So have you exceeded the boiling temperature? If you've exceeded the boiling temperature, then you know that it, you're in the vapor region. If you've not exceeded the boiling temperature, then you're back here in the liquid region. And I've made myself between videos here a note to compare to one atmosphere. And what that means is that um, if the pressure, if the given pressure is one atmosphere, let's say, right, so that's about 101.3 kilopascals or 14.7 roughly PSIA, well, the boiling temperature or the saturated temperature at those is going to be about 100 degrees C, and it's going to be about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So what that means is if your given pressure is 101.3 kilopascals, then I know water is going to boil at 100 degrees C. Because at one atmosphere, water boils at 100 degrees C. So if I have water at, if I have water and it's at 101.3 kilopascals, and I know my temperature is 120 degrees C, what does that tell me about my phase? Well, I don't even have to go look that up in the tables, right? If, if I've got 101.3 kilopascals and my temperature is 120 degrees C, what is my phase? Well, that's, that's this scenario here, right? This, this is, you know, and, and if we did it in English units, 101.3 is 14.7 roughly PSI. Your boiling temperature there is going to be about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Right? So if I've got 120 degrees C, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. 250, give or take, 250 Fahrenheit, right? So that's going to put you beyond the boiling temperature in both scales. It's the same thing. So I say compare to one atmosphere, because most people can relate to that. You know if you've got water that's at 120 degrees Celsius or it's at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, it's, it's in the vapor phase, right? Um, it's boiled off. That's beyond the boiling point. It's the same thing at any given pressure. Go look up the boiling temperature. That's the saturated temperature. Has your temperature exceeded the saturated temperature at your given pressure? If the temperature is greater than the saturated temperature at the given pressure, then you have a superheated vapor. If the temperature is less than the saturated temperature at the given pressure, it has not reached the boiling point yet. It is still in the liquid phase. Okay. So, a simple example, let's say I've got R134, two kilograms worth of it in a vessel, in a rigid, rigid filled vessel um, containing R134, two kilograms, 900 kilopascals, 80 degrees Celsius. They want us to determine the volume of the tank and the internal energy. Okay. I don't know if I've got tables for this here. I do, but that's okay. We'll look it up. And okay, so this is L5 and 6. This is page 4. I've already moved page 3 on. And this is L5 and 6. Got too much stuff over here off camera. <laughs> Glad you guys can't see it. Okay, let's. Given L5 and 6. This is page number five. So, we're given, we know we've got R134A. I'm given a mass, two kilograms. I'm given, so the numbers, I'm, I, you don't have to write the numbers down first. I'm going to write the numbers down first. I'm given 900 kilopascals, that's a pressure. Uh, degrees C is a temperature, so T is equal to 80 degrees C. Uh, there's one more thing they've given me here. 
This text will use the adjective rigid. Rigid refers to, in, in most mechanical engineering type scenarios, and many engineering type scenarios, rigid refers to n something that doesn't deform or bend. Um, they're telling us that the volume is constant. I don't think we need that in this problem, but it is given, so I'm going to write it down as given information. That's just good practice. Um, what are we looking for? Well, they want us to determine the total volume, so they want us to find what is that total volume that we've already established as constant. And they want us to find the internal energy. Now, they've not specified whether they want big U or little U, but neither one's hard to find. Um, okay. So what are we looking for here? Well, we're looking for some properties. I need to know the volume and the internal energy of this, this tank. Those are properties. How do I find properties? Well, I can't find U very easily unless I know some other properties. I do know some other properties. I know I've got R134A tables, and I know to use them I'm going to need at least two properties. Well, I've got two here. So let's see if, how we can do, okay? so. Um, so to use those tables, again, know my substance, R134A. What properties do I know? I know pressure and temperature. Okay, so far so good. Determine which table and which row. Determine the state. Which table, which row. Well, I'm in metric units. Um, I need to know the phase. And I know the phase based on one of two categories. Well, this is where I'm given pressure and temperature. So this is my category. PT diagram, rough sketch. Boom, that's all we got to do. Okay, so here's what we need to know. At 900 kilopascals, I need to go find the saturated temperature. Okay? If you go look those up, go pull out your tables, um, your property tables out of your book. Okay? And you should find, again, I'm... Now, I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to expect you've got your tables there in front of you and you're doing this along with me. If not, I don't really don't know how much you're going to get out of this. Um, if you've gone in your tables and you've looked up at for R134A tables, and I can show you real quick, R134A tables, metric units, what is that, table A11, A12, I think. And it's going to be in the page 920s or so, if I had to guess doing this enough years and so in, in the ninth edition it's page like 902 right? so R134A you got 900 kilopascals R134 is going to boil down here at 35.51 okay, so that's table A12 R134 is going to boil at 35.51 degrees C what is our temperature? we're out here at 80 degrees C. So what does that tell us about the phase? My hope is that you're yelling at your computer screen or your phone or your tablet that, Steve, that's superheated vapor. And if not, well, that's what you should be doing. If people around you don't think you're crazy yet, then we, I, I don't know. They should. <laughs> anyway, we're in the superheated vapor phase because I've got a temperature beyond the saturated temperature. Okay. So, I need to go to superheated vapor tables. And so, you go to the superheated vapor tables and you find, should find something that looks kind of like this, right? I've got a block here for 0.9 megapascals. That's 900 kilopascals. What is my temperature? I've got 80, right? So, you put a straight edge across there at 80 degrees Celsius, 0.9 megapascals. And what did we need? Well, this is, this far column is V, this one is U. This is H and this is S. Go look at the top of your tables and make sure I'm not telling you lies there. Um, so my V value, if we pull those off, that's my set this off camera. My V value, and so here's how I would draw this. I would say um, at 900 kilopascals and a temperature of 80 degrees C, we know that's going to tell us that the specific volume is 0 0.0. 2863, at least in my, the table I've got in front of me. Yours might be slightly different. They will adjust from addition to addition. Uh, this is metric units, so that should be meters cubed per kilogram. I, you don't have to memorize that. Just go to the top of the table and look that up. The U value should be 
six, and that is kilojoules per kilogram. It's always energy per mass. This one's always volume per mass. So that's easier sometimes to memorize than the units themselves. Okay, how does that help us? Right? That, that's not what I'm looking for. They want big V and, and big U. Well, we find those, big V, which is mass times little v. And you can kind of look at the units here and figure that out. Mass times this is going to give me something that's in units of volume. So this is 2 kilograms, the given mass, multiplied by this value we just looked up, 0 0.02863 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay. Um, and big U is going to equal mass times little u, or again, that's 2 kilograms times little u there, 289.86 kilojoules per kilogram. And I'm debating on whether I want to pull my calculator out here. I think I can do this in my head. So um, I'm going to write down some numbers here, and if they're wrong, well, you can blast me in the comments if you like. Um, 2 is, is going to be 5. This is going to be a 7. Maybe a two and a six, I think. Meters cubed. Two times this guy, I think is that. Two times this guy. I don't expect you to do these in your head. If you can't, I, I expect if you really thought about it, you could. But this is, if I'm doing this on a test or for reals, I'm doing it in a calculator. But um, I've done this long enough. I think I'm okay. So this is going to be a five. This is going to be a seven. This is going to be a nine. Point. This is going to be a 7, 2, I think. Yeah. If that's, if that's not right, blast me in the comments. Blast away. Answers. Mm. All right. Let's keep moving. Mm. I'll try to not have like 20 of these videos. And the camera breaks these up into 15 minute segments. So let's keep moving. If you have questions, send me an email. Let me know what's not clear, okay? <clears throat> now, so we worked three examples where the property falls nice, beautifully, evenly on one of the values in the tables. That is not realistic. That does not happen. Um, it, it does happen sometimes, right? And if, if we're really careful, we can pick properties where it happens, but it's not uncommon that we end up between rows. Um, so we, we end up with something that's not exactly on the table. What do we do? Well, we give up and say, Steve, that's too hard. I don't know what to do. Well, okay, that's, that, that doesn't work for most engineering school, but if that's what you want to do, okay, I would suggest let's do something different. Um, let's talk about a couple of scenarios where it doesn't land exactly even with the values on the table. One of those is a saturated mixture. And what happens if I'm in the dome region, if I'm between the value for saturated vapor and saturated liquid? If I have a saturated mixture, I need to compute a quantity called the quality. Now, let me make sure. What do I have? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so what do we do if it's in this dome region? Well, we compute this quantity we call the quality. Right? So X represents what we call the quality. Okay? So the quality, which is a, a value that's going to be between 0 and 1. Okay? <clears throat> so I take the value that I know for, let's say, for specific volume, minus the value for saturated liquid, divided by the difference between the value for saturated vapor and saturated liquid. And that same quantity that I can write once I've found the quality for one property, specific volume, for example, then I can find the, the quality, or I can use that quality to find an unknown u value, for example. So if I know it with, if I know my v value, I can use that to find x, and then x will give me u value because I can go look these up. I can look up u f and u g out of the tables, and then solve for the unknown u. And notice, there we've already defined this. We're going to pick up there on the next video. That's okay.